The intention for today's Mass is for Joe Naughton, birthday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My friends, as we gather together today, observing the memorial of Mary, the mother of the church, let us call to mind our need as members of the church for the mercy and pardon that Christ alone brings us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also, grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and exulting in the holiness of her children, may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to him and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you have put here with me. She gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me, and so I ate it. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she came, became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Our response this morning is, Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves, the gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God, and of Zion they shall say, one and all were born in her and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance, my home is within you. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. Church who nurtures 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke their, the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. The Gospel of the Lord. The Second Vatican Council was the uh, determining event for the church in our modern time. And at the conclusion of that epoch-making event, Pope St. Paul VI promulgated in union with the bishops of the world a new title in, on an official level for our Blessed Mother as Mother of the Church. Although the designation in an official way was new, the devotion itself is as old as the church itself, since the place of Mary in the Christian faith was very evident, even in the time of the writing of scriptures and certainly from the very birth and, and, and life of the church. We see in the Old Testament numerous prefigurations and prototypes for Mary, the mother of God, it, people like Sarah and Rachel particularly, even the whole concept of Jerusalem or Zion, which is present in today's responsorial psalm, as Zion was seen throughout the Old Testament, the city of Jerusalem, as being a mother of the faithful of God's covenant. And, and it becomes a prototype for Mary, who is spoken of, anticipated in the Old Testament as the daughter of Zion. Above all, Mary is seen prefigured in a reverse kind of a way to the place of Eve in the Old Testament, about whom we have that first reading today. Just as St. Paul designates that Christ is the new and better Adam, the very earliest teachers of the faith, the patristics, saw that Mary was a new Eve, that as Mary is the mother of humanity on the natural level, that Mary becomes the mother of humanity on a spiritual level. Christ is designated the Savior from the beginning. Mary, the mother of Christ, is therefore defined as the mother of God by the earliest councils, and as Christ is in scripture present as in the church, which is his body, the mystical body of Christ, so too Mary is the mother of the church because she is the mother of Christ. So that is the feast that in 2018, Pope Francis gave a particular place on the liturgical calendar uh, on the Monday after Pentecost. And we see that just as Eve became the source of, Adam and Eve together became the source of the fall of man and of our inclination to sin, so too Mary becomes the vehicle 
by which grace returns into the world as Eve's no to God in the Old Testament was perceived by the earliest fathers of the church as being reversed by Mary, who welcomed the Ave, Eva, Ave, of the angel Gabriel who came to her in the Annunciation. On the cross, our Lord himself focuses attention on the relationship between Mary and the church personified in the person of St. John, the beloved disciple, one of the 12. So on this day, let us rec recognize the fact that even though we very often experience the difficulties of our humanity, especially through sin and temptation, we are continually reminded that we are poor, banished children of Eve, as the prayer says, that on the other hand, we also seek Mary as our mother, as our intercessor, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, that which Eve threw away, Mary embraces in accepting the message of the angel, and that we pray to her, our Holy Mary, the mother of God, to pray for us sinners now. And at every moment, in temptation and in joy, and at the hour of our death, until the hour when we enter into eternal life. We now bring our prayers to the Lord, whose mercy knows no bound. For the church, may the Lord help her flourish under Mary's maternal charity, giving visible witness to the saving power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the salvation of the world, may God's grace touch the hearts of those who have not yet encountered his love, drawing them closer to him and transforming their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For parents who struggle to ensure the well-being of their families, may the Holy Spirit offer them comfort, assurance, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered here in this holy place and joining with us in the Holy Mass. May God bless our every endeavor and strengthen us in our work, building his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they be embraced by the Lord in eternal salvation. We pray to the Lord. And for the intention of today's Mass for Joseph Naughton birthday, we pray to the Lord. God of glory in your infinite goodness, please listen to the prayers we have offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord, Lord accept, accept this sacrifice from your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, 
and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb and giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the church. Standing beside the cross, she received a testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Mother of the Church, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Joseph, her chaste spouse, with St. Teresa of Avila, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. We invite you to remain with us for the devotional prayers immediately after Mass today. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.